Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the House Majority Coalition Press Availability. Um, today is day 78. I'm very pleased to be joined by the co-chair of House Finance, uh, Representative Paul Seat from Homer, the Majority Leader for the House, Representative Chris Tuck from Anchorage, and the Chair of the Community Regional Affairs Committee, Representative Justin Parrish from here in Juneau. Um, obviously, things are getting very busy. Um, on the heels of uh, certainly a major announcement by the Senate about uh, education cuts, as well as seeing that their operating budget is uh, moving now and scheduled for action, uh, possibly even today on the Senate floor. So we have a lot of things going on, and I want to take this opportunity <coughs> to uh, get some brief statements from uh, my fellow legislators and then to take any of your questions. So Mr. Majority Leader. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> yeah, our coalition totally opposes um, the irresponsibility, irresponsible cuts that the Senate did in the last couple of days. Uh, you know, first they they um, put zero into the budget and had public testimony, which I don't think it was fair to the public. And then um, now they're they're offering just a five percent across the board cut to the base student allocation. That's about another uh, 69, 70 million dollars in cuts to public education. Over the last three years, we've been cutting the budget. Um, overall, 44% has been cut. Um, I'm proud of our co-chairs of finance because they have put together a comprehensive plan, House Bill 111, House Bill 115, and uh, now the Senate is uh, holding public education hostage um, just to get a permanent fund only plan, which I think is very irresponsible. If you look at their plan, it does uh, continue to drain our savings over the years. And uh, to me, obviously, the Senate never wants to see a capital budget. Um, we have to fix the situation this year. We've got to get things on the books because a lot of things are simply not going to be implemented for the next couple of years because we've got to give time for the administration um, to pull it all together. So this is the time to act. Uh, if we don't do it this year, all of our Senate majority members are up for election next year, and it's going to make it tougher for them to make the right decisions for Alaska. Representative Seaton. Uh, thank you. Um, I am also very disappointed in the uh, education cuts uh, that were proposed by the Senate. Uh, what those actually mean is that for a $20 million difference in Anchorage, that's a 200 teacher loss in addition to what they're already planning, it's 70 uh, teacher loss in uh, Fairbanks. 50 teachers would be lost from my district, the um, Kenai Peninsula Borough, uh, Lower Kuskokwim, uh, 40 teachers would be lost, as well as over 90 for the Matsu Borough. So we're talking about very significant cuts, and it, it's interesting that the uh, promise is that, oh, well, we'll do some maybe innovation grants in the future, uh, but we're going to cut you now, and then we might um, appropriate money in the future for some individualized uh, districts to do things. Uh, so that I don't think that that's a efficient or um, responsible way to proceed with um, our, our children and say that we are going to have these drastic impacts now and then uh, maybe in the future we'll look at something that you can propose to the Department of Education not knowing what the parameters of those grants would be. Representative Parrish. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Like the other members of, uh, of my caucus, I'm very concerned about the, the choices of the Senate and the priorities that they're demonstrating. I worked in a school immediately before I came here, and I can tell you that cutting more than 20 teachers out of Juneau, cutting more than 700 statewide, would have a direct impact on the quality of education that we're able to afford to the next generation, and that's that's very troubling. So we will continue to to work for defending quality education and community and regional affairs. I'm looking forward to hearing Senate Bill 63. That's the um, smoking ban for public places. And I'm very glad and very privileged to be part of a responsible majority, which is forwarding a plan which spreads the burden equitably so that we can all pull our weight and move into a future which would be 
worth living in. So with that, we will take questions as always and ask uh, if people identify themselves and their affiliations. Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. First, maybe for um, Representative Seaton, also maybe for Speaker Edgman, if um, the House advances HB 115 and assuming it, it passes, by what realistic um, path do you see getting to conference on a permanent fund bill with the Senate? Well, I think the uh, actual um, budgetary crisis that we're in, uh, the budgetary situation, we actually need to plan for the future. We need a comprehensive plan. And I think that um, rational minds and reasonable people will come together around a solution. And the solution really entails all of the things which uh, we've talked about in the pillars of our plan and, you know, the restructuring of the permanent fund uh, itself so that we can get uh, some earnings reserve on a percent of market value, a structured way of removing that money, a reduction in the permanent fund dividend, uh, a broad-based tax, and also uh, oil and gas uh, uh, production taxes and, and tax credits. and unless you have all of those pieces, you don't get to a solution. And one of the problems with the Senate's approach is they're leaving an $800 million deficit uh, this year, and by 2023, they're still having a $500 million deficit. When you have a $500 million deficit every single year, what it means is your cuts are going to be like they are this year. And um, what are you going to do? You're saying a 5% cut to education this year, and but you're saying in their budget that you're going to have to make the same kind of cut additionally next year, not just uh, a return, but if you're having another 5% cut uh, next year, that's, I just don't think that's a responsible way to take care of our constitutional obligation uh, to the citizens of the state to provide for an adequate education. And just for follow-up, when does that mean that, um, that you'll pass it over and that there'll be negotiations and if you um, get them to come over to your side a bit, 15 will come? I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how do you get into a room where you hash out, you know, what the permanent fund plan ultimately is going to be? Well, that, sure, uh, that's what the conference uh, committee uh, process is all about, and we have to get together. There are different philosophies, you know, the, seems that the philosophy of the Senate is they want to have a poor Alaska. They want us to have a deficit so that we're constantly cutting and not having adequate funds to, to fulfill the basic needs that Alaska, um, Alaskans want. And so um, that's a challenging philosophy for us who want to provide for an adequate, um, adequate budget for the Alaska we want to live in. And so um, that, but those are conf that's what conferences are about, is to try and figure out how, how you get there and what modifications each side can make so that you can come to some agreement. And I thought yesterday was a bit of a gut check for uh, not only those of us in the building, but uh, I'd like to, here at the press conference, uh, welcome those from the education community, the school board members, uh, administrators that are in town this week. Uh, I'm told to be followed by the superintendents next week and uh, others. But really, it comes down to do we want to cut our way to a sustainable future in Alaska, or do we want to try an all of the above reasonable approach, which we in the, the House are advancing? So yesterday, you saw what those cuts could look like for year one. Um, you can certainly extrapolate into year two, year three. And what I was told by my school districts yesterday is those cuts uh, uh, that were proposed by the Senate, uh, heck, one school district said that uh, those cuts amounted to one sixth of the number of teachers that they have in their entire system. That's one-sixth. So if you did it again next year, that'd be, that'd be a third. And you did it the next year, that'd be half of their teachers. But yet we ex expect them to provide a quality education uh, commensurate with the responsibilities of our Constitution. So I think the, the choices in front of the House and the Senate are getting uh, more clear. Uh, we certainly have the governor who um, I hope would weigh into the conversation here at some point soon, and I expect that he will. But uh, getting to those negotiations, which you just uh, asked a moment ago, um, I, I think that, that those gut uh, checks that we just saw yesterday are going to inform those negotiations, and it's my fervent hope that we get more Alaskans around the state to sort of 
chime in and to say, hey, look, this is what we envision our, our state to be going down the road. And do we want to eat into our seed corn? You know, the ultimate uh, sort of investment in the future, the K through 12 system in Alaska. Do we want to erode that to the point where a lot of the smaller schools around the state, which I'm most familiar with, really don't have the means to provide a, a quality public education? I think that's a, a pertinent question. And it's obvious to me that they are ignoring the 7,000 Alaskan survey that they did, their own survey. They're ignoring it. At that, in that survey, 67% of Alaskans either wanted to maintain their current level of funding for education or to increase the level of education. And I think that's the reason why they um, came up with a lousy public process of uh, having people testify with no numbers. And then from what I hear is they don't plan on opening up public testimony again now that they have numbers in there and now that they're, they're uh, doing these austerity cuts. And that's really, you know, the choice that we have. And, I, you know, we want Alaska to be prosperous, you know, and so we, we're looking for um, ways to um, create a budget that leads us to prosperity where they're creating a budget that leads us to austerity. And uh, it's just different vision of what Alaska can be. Good morning, Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, you guys are proposing through House Bill 115 and the operating budget, um, a budget that appears to not have a deficit. Um, if that's the case and education is a priority, um, why not be funding education at this point at the rate of inflation and giving them a small increase? Well, I'll just take that, I guess. Yes, what we did was we used the 17, the fiscal year 17 draw, and we put that in the public education fund uh, to forward fund education. And that actually increased by six and a half million dollars the amount that goes to school districts under pupil transportation. So, um, and we also put in $1.2 million to make sure that we maintain the pre-K for those um, northern villages that were in the Moore case that were, uh, you know, that was one of the activities that was required to be uh, funded. And we were extending that for another year to make sure that we have uh, kids and uh, on a good path into school. And so we are working on that. And we put another $1.2 million in pre-K, which uh, pays big dividends to your public education system. But there's been no, I don't think there's been any increase in the BSA in two years. Is that correct? Well, I think we've done a pretty good job of maintaining what we have. Um, and, uh, golly, talk to, uh, maintaining what we have. Uh, and by golly, if you talk to, I think, any school district, big or small in the state, uh, just by maintaining it, that itself is a reduction. Because you look at health care costs, you look at inflation, you look at... Uh, uh, personnel costs inching upward, all of those. Uh, so, you know, the fact that we've been able to maintain uh, uh, K through 12 funding, I think, has uh, largely been uh, acceptable in in light of uh, you know reducing it, which is certainly what the Senate is proposing at the moment. All that, all that said, we're not the only people in the building. Now, if we were, then we, <laughs> well, things would happen a lot faster, wouldn't they? However, we've got to be ready to compromise in order to get to a comprehensive fiscal plan. That means just holding at the flat level of funding. Again, I, I was in a school, so I, I do know that year on year things get tighter. And I'd like to get back to a point where we're in a state